Greetings everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. So the title of this video is Ma'at, Mathematics and the Law of Correspondence. The goddess Ma'at in ancient Kemetan culture, like all of the Pa'ut Niteru and all of the gods and goddesses, represented certain aspects of the divine, of the all, life, above and below. Goddess Ma'at is representative of the interrelationships or the interdependence between all things. She represents the interrelationships between the above and the below. Okay, Ma'at is balanced for that reason. She is balance. She is truth. She is justice. She is liberty. She takes the above and the above equals the below. As above, so below. That's the law of correspondence. Okay, when you're looking at mathematics, the word mathematics is derived from ma'at. All right. So when you're looking at the interdependence and the interrelationship between things, you're talking mathematics. You're talking mathematics. All right, and we'll get into that in this video. So, ancient Kemetan culture, the bird is revered for many reasons. One of the reasons is the birds as a species are said to be operating between the heavens and the earth. Okay, there that's the energy that they embody. In that sense, when you see Ma'at, you often see her depicted with wings or sometimes you'll see the feather coming from the top of her head, the ostrich feather in particular. Why ostrich feather? Well, let's look at the characteristics of the ostrich. The ostrich feather, very fluffy, very sensitive to the wind, the air, very sensitive to vibration. Air is equivalent to spirit. In the Zulu language, umoya means air. It also means spirit, also means wind, also means breath. At my school, we had a gentleman who came to the school who was a student of the Miru Niter, the language of ancient Kemet, as well as the Bantu languages. He showed a direct relationship between the Miru Niter and the Bantu languages of which Zulu is amongst. Umoya means wind. It also means air, spirit. So we find that Ma'at is sensitive to air. Being sensitive to air and spirit means that she's operating at that highest level and that any disturbances or any vibrations in the spiritual world are picked up by the physical. The ostrich also has very big eyes and a smaller brain. This characteristic symbolizes in Ma'at her ability to see truth without distortion. Distortion of mind. She sees truth. This is the truth, this is the justice, this is the balance. Okay, this is Ma'at. The ostrich is also a very fast bird, very fast and can run at high speeds for long distance. It has great endurance. The ostrich is also a symbol for the god Shu. Shu meaning he who rises up. In Kemetan culture, Shoot is the father of Newt, goddess of the heavens, and Geb, god of the earth. So Shu is operating between the heavens and the earth, which is what the birds represent in Kemetan culture. The symbol for the ostrich, you see a lot of correspondence there, right? Okay, so the symbol for Shu is the ostrich. So Ma'at embodies all of these characteristics. There was a book released by the University of Chicago's, what used to be called the Oriental Institute. They've changed the name recently. I'll be doing a video on that. It's actually in production right now. Between Heaven and Earth, Birds in Ancient Egypt. And the whole book is dedicated to that relationship, how the birds relate to spiritual principles and their presence in art and culture in general. It shows a representation of birds in ancient Kemetan culture. But for me, it doesn't go deep enough into the spiritual representation and the spiritual significance of birds in ancient Kemetan culture. But it, it you know, serves its purpose. Okay, so now let's look at numbers. The ancient people were very wise, extremely knowledgeable. 
One of the concepts, principles that come from the ancients are the concepts known as the trivium and quadrivium. Now I can tell you, as someone who's tried to research deeper into what the trivium and the quadrivium is, you're not going to find a lot of information on it. But what you will find is that, and you're going to have to look deep, but what you will find is that the Etruscans, the early, early ancient inhabitants of Greece, use the trivium. Now, trivium relates thinking, learning, application of logic, coming to conclusions, taking information and processing that information for some outcome, some conclusion. The quadrivium is the aspect that deals with numbers. The quad means four. All right, so the quadrivium consists of numbers, numbers in space, which is geometry. You also have music, which is numbers in time. Everybody knows about quarter notes, half notes, bars, beats. These are all numbers. And you have astrology. Anybody who studied astrology is familiar with the mathematical nature of the angles and relationships amongst planetary bodies or heavenly bodies. Okay, so this is all mathematics. This is all numbers. And the ancients were well aware of it. The quadrivium and the trivium underwent a identity shift and became known as the seven liberal arts in many of the European countries when the Moors took the Renaissance or brought Europe the Renaissance, they introduced a lot of these concepts. And then you had the birth of the seven liberal arts, the tri and the quad, okay? Now, the spiritual mathematics looked at the interrelationships and the interconnectedness of all things. This is Ma'at, okay? This is what Ma'at represents. At its origin, the trivium was a system for learning the science that I'm speaking about now. How to truly process information. We have different stages of development. But the trivium is a system for learning the sciences. That's the original intent. The correspondence of numbers to life. If you look at the seven liberal arts at any university, you can see a faint light essence, evidence of what the trivium and quadrivium represented a long, 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 long time ago, but it's completely lost its <laughs> impact, power. The essence and root of it is there, although astronomy is, has replaced astrology and the connection between the above and the below is lost in the seven liberal arts at universities, in addition to the fact that the correspondences of numbers to life, that, that's completely lost in the sense of the spiritual nature of it. If you look at the Eye of Horus, you find another example of how numbers correspond to life and different aspects of life, particularly in this case, the body. Ma'at. Ma'at represents balance, homeostasis, the balance between the above and the below. That's Ma'at. The word mathematics is derived from Ma'at. Why is Ma'at significant? Why should we be balanced? Why should we be aware of ourselves in that sense and then what does mathematics have to do with balance well at the simplest level we have an equation in algebra most kids when they get to the algebra level they're lost why am i learning algebra i don't want to be a mathematician i don't want to be a math teacher why am i learning algebra all right we are mathematics we are numbers as above, so below. Okay, so the above will be the divinity, the divine self, the upper levels of the Pa'utni Teru, primarily uh, the Osarian, the Sekret level, and the Tahuti level are the highest aspects of the self.
All of it is the self, including the Amen level, the divine level. It's us. That's who we are. Consciousness cannot be divided. The all and the infinite cannot be divided or multiplied. That being the case, divinity is everywhere. Plain and simple. Simple equation. Equation says that one side is equal to the other side. Mentally, your higher selves, your upper level selves, are the are equal and directly represented or mirrored in the lower aspects of the self. Mirrored in the sense that what you think, you get an effect for. Cause and effect. Cause is the thought level, divine level, the consciousness level. The effect level is the lower aspects, the gap level, the physical world. Conscious mind is just as important as the upper levels of mind, the higher levels of the Pa'ut Nituru. Without the ability to individualize and single out and focus on an aspect of the infinite, you have no stability. You cannot focus in this yet world, in this physical world. You need the conscious mind to choose and to be specific about what aspect of the infinite you want to focus on. They're both necessary and important. People who take control of the above and take control of the infinite world enjoy life. Back on the algebra topic. What's on the left side is equal to the right side. If we say that the left side represents the higher aspects of the self, the one, two, and three levels of the Pa'ut Nituru, then what happens at the lower level, at the Gep level, will be equal to that. Meaning that every thought has an effect. That's my aunt. How much wiggle room do you have with the thought? Can you have certain thoughts and not have an, a representation in the Geb world? A mirrored representation in the Geb world? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> to the degree that you master the thought level, higher levels will be equal directly in magnitude to what you experience at the Geb level. This is, this is pure mathematics. And every aspect of thought can be represented mathematically in the Geb level. Absolutely in the Geb level. We may not understand it and we may not understand why and it's not really necessary to understand why. What is, what is true and definitely factual is that the thought produces an effect. The thought generates the effect. The intensity of the thought is influenced by emotion, feeling. You also have justice, law. Ma'at represents law and justice. Why so? Because of the mathematical nature of law. Justice is maintaining the balance. Justice is maintaining the equality of the equation where the effect is not commensurate or equal to the thought. You have an inequality. When you have an inequality, all hell breaks loose. So what is the inequality? Inequality is any attempt to break away from true ma'at balance. Your divine self, your divine consciousness seeks to restore the balance. It will seek to restore the balance and you will feel the imbalance. If there's injustice, you feel it. If you are doing something that your body does not want, you will get justice. What is justice? The restoration of the balance. Maintaining the balance. Okay, so in, in an equation, what you do to one side, you have to compensate on the other side. So if we have a negative situation on the left side, negative energy on the left side, we have to do something on the right side to balance the equation, right? If we don't balance the equation towards something that's beneficial to us, we have disease, we have illness. Stay focused on the fact that we're talking higher levels of mind, lower levels of mind. We're talking cause, we're talking effect. The thought has to be the balancing agent. 
the rebalancing agent, rebalancing the net negativity, rebalance the negativity so that the effect on the opposite side of the equation, that you get the effect that's desired. We're talking pure mathematics. When you realize that your thoughts have a perfect representation in the Geb world, in the physical world, that gives you power. I understand the relationship between juristic law and spiritual law, and I use it. When you study spiritual law, you see a direct balance, a direct relationship. Sometimes when you Google Ma'at, you'll see Lady Justice with the blindfold on. This is to acknowledge the fact that the outer eyes can't be used to see truth. You use the inner eyes to see truth, to see the real world, to understand the true relationship between the within and the without. So this is a basic introduction into law of correspondence, which is as above, so below. As you feel on the inside, you experience on the outside that this is a mathematical relationship. This is my art. This is balance. Okay. I'll leave it at that. I've said a lot. And as always, I really to really do justice on the topic, I have to do like really super long videos. And I know we're all busy. If that's something that you want, then pop it in the comments or shoot me an email. Um, yeah. Anyway, everybody enjoy your day. And thank you for listening to this brief video. And until next time, peace and love.